Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today, we want to talk about the page view widget and how we can use it to make our apps wipeable through screens. As you can see on the right side, we have already a little example prepared here. And what you can do is you can create a swipeable widget that um, shows different screens and it also takes the state for the different uh, buttons of the bottom navigation widget. So let's get started. To begin with, we have to change something in our boilerplate. Since the last time, we want to have now the padding and save area because they apply to all the widgets inside of the certain widget. And why we want to do that, I will show you in a second. What we will do is taking the save area and the padding and put them inside of our child widget. So I surround the column with a padding. So, and I will also surround it with a save area widget. So, and now we remove these widgets from the widget tree. And now we have just the child widgets here. Now we want to change that and want to use the page view widget. So for that, I wrap this widget with the page view. The page view takes um, a parameter called children because in the children, it saves all the different widgets that it should display. Now we will not see anything anymore. And as you can see, the buttons still work, but they don't display anything. Or better said, they always display the page view. And now what we want to do, instead of doing the switch statement up here, which is anyway not that beautiful, we take these widgets down here in that child, uh, children widget. Remove that, and instead of having just one, we will have all four of them. So, and as you see, now already we can swipe between the different screens. But that's of course not everything, right? Because our bottom navigation bar don't work as we expected. We want to have it everything work together, right? So whenever we swipe, we also want to change the index of the bottom navigation bar. And as you can see, it doesn't work if you click on them right now. All right, so for that, we can remove now everything in our on tap with the switch statement. We can keep the set state for now. So that is what happens on tap if we are clicking on the bottom navigation bar. So what you can see, it still changes the, con uh, the current index, which is taken inside of the bottom navigation bar. But every page view has an other input called controller. This gives us the possibility to create a page controller, a page view controller. And I will do that inside of our state on top. And I call it page controller, page controller, or I make it private and say it is a new page controller, which I create. And this page controller also has some in, uh, parameters that we can pass, like for example, the initial page. So whenever we come to that page new and everything getting recreated, we want that the initial page is zero. You don't have to specify that. I think it will work also because the standard value is zero, but it is always a good idea to set that value. So you can see here, it has the initial value zero. This page controller needs to be set as a page controller for this page view. And now we have more options on this page view, more possibilities to change the state at the moment. So we can now navigate and everything is fine. And another thing that we want to do on the page view is on page change. What we get is an integer of the page that we are currently navigating to. And now what we want to do is setting the current index to this page and of course want to set state and taking this inside. So whenever we now swipe and we reach another page, you can see down here the bottom navigation bar is actually changing. That's perfect. But if we press it, we still don't navigate. And for that, we can change something inside of here. We set the current state, but additionally, we also want to say the page controller uh, have different options like we can animate to a specific page, we can animate to a specific uh, bar, uh, in between state of the different pages, we can also jump to a page and the same thing with the jump to you can somewhere in between jump inside. So for now let's start with the jump page and I just give past the value inside and I set the state of course. So when I press now one of the different values, uh, uh, buttons down here, we see we jump to this page. And what it means with jumping, I will show in a second. So what will be happen if we change it to animate to page? Now we have to pass more information down because we want to animate. We also have to specify the duration, how long it will take to animate. 
and I will take now 200 milliseconds. And also what we have to pass by is the curve. And if you don't know about curves, it is different shapes of how the animation should look. And Flutter gives us the opportunity of curves class, which is a big, um, big class that contains all the different linear curves and everything. And you can read here all the different animation API docs. And then you can directly see a GIF or a small video that explains you how the curve will transform your animation. That works actually for all of the different things. So decelerate, you're getting fast and then you get slower and um, fast linear is in is out. Okay, that is broken. But all of the different uh, things, you can really take a good look how the animation will look like. On the right side, you also have these three, um, these three different uh, points. And if I let it run, you can directly see how all the different animation work with this curve. Okay, so now let's take, um, because I'm lazy, the linear curve and let's take a look how it will look like because now we animate to different pages. So if I click now on the next page, you can see we don't are immediately on that page, we animate it. And the best thing is what you can see down here in the bottom navigation bar, if I press the last one, it will swap between these two. So you can see it looks like it makes like a, low, uh, a wave in between of the different views. And also if I enhance the milliseconds counter, it will take longer time. So if I press that one, you can see it will take a while. This is something that you can use. Of course, not everyone is a fan from it uh, to make it like that, but I think it is quite nice to look at. What we have learned, we can now swipe between the different views. We set the state of the bottom navigation bar and also we have the possibility to work with the page controller, which has, of course, much more power. And I really recommend you to read more about the page controller because all of these different things like add listener and so on and so forth. Another thing that you can uh, set inside of the page view controller or page controller is you can say the, oops, another thing that you can set in the page view is the scroll direction. And the axis can be horizontal, but also vertical. So, and that not uh, makes maybe not so much sense with the bottom navigation bar. But if you want to create, for example, a gallery or something like that, it makes a lot of sense. So, if I navigate now, you can see we uh, go up and down, and it has more the elevator look, I would say. So, you can create like an elevator with that or something like that that shows you different screens and make the, your app way more beautiful if you want to. All right, guys, well done. Today we learned how we can set the state of the bottom navigation bar and also make our views swipeable, which is very important for iOS users because they are usually getting used to swipe the different screens. And also it has a very big benefit for Android users as well, if you want to. And Additionally, we learned that we can also set the axis so we can go up and down instead of the um, back and forth. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining me today. This was my episode from Flutter Explained for this week. I'm really looking forward to see you next week. Give this video a like button if you like the show. Until the next time. See you guys.